Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this very sensible and highly realistic Jagdpanther. I can already sense the No Fun Allowed crowd furiously clacking away to let me know that this isn't realistic. Anyway, this is an S model Jagdpanther in 172nd scale. I built this kit a while ago and if you want to check out that build video there's a link in the description and in the card at the upper right corner right now. I primed the model with Ammo by MIG One Shot Brown Oxide Primer and then I applied a base coat of SMS Premium Jet Black, which is what was recommended for the colour shift colour. It goes on easily, though it is a lacquer and it's a bit smelly. Good ventilation is important anytime you're spraying, but I would say even more so for this kind of paint. I obviously neglected to film myself spraying both the primer and the black, but it's on the model so I must have done it, right? I then sprayed SMS Colour Shift Nebula, which as the name implies is a colour shifting paint. It has the colours Cyan, Blue and Purple. I'd been wanting to try SMS paints for a while now. They're an Australian company and it's nice to support your local manufacturers. I've been using their extra thin cement for a while and I quite like it. I suppose I could have tried something a bit more sensible, but this looked like it would be fun and that's what I like. Applying the paint is easy. It's already thin enough to go through the airbrush, but I would say be sure to shake it up good and proper before and while using it. Because this is a translucent sort of paint, it's not going to cover with one coat unless you just pile it on, and that's going to look bad. So multiple coats it is, which is the appropriate way to spray any paint really. I did four light coats and it builds up nicely. I think this is good because if you want to do just a subtle shiny colour that looks mostly black, you could do that with one or two coats. You can see as it builds up it looks quite shiny and mostly blue at this angle. It still looks kind of dark though, I rather like this effect. Anyway, you can see as I'm moving the model around, hints of the different colours that this paint contains. Part of the reason I did this on a Jagd Panther is the big flat surfaces at different angles. I figured that would help show the different colours quite nicely. As cool as this colour is, I do want to add some regular tank colours to the model as well. So I paint the tracks with Ammo by MIG Rust Tracks. This, as the name implies, is a rusty colour for the tracks. And I think it looks pretty good. I brush this on with a large brush on the larger areas of the tracks, and then I use a smaller brush around the road wheels to try and avoid getting the colour on areas I don't want it. That's pretty straightforward really. Touch ups are always possible, but really I would prefer to avoid them. I use the same colour to paint the exhausts. I'm going to apply more rusty effects to these later, and I'm not really sure they should be rusty, but it's going to add some interest and break up the base colour a bit. Then I paint the spare track links, obviously with the same track colour. I almost forgot to do these and I suppose often spare tracks are painted over with the hull colour when repainted, but I think it's more interesting to have the colours broken up a bit, so rusty tracks it is. Again, this is a simple matter of brushing the paint onto the part. That is generally how we paint things. You can fix mistakes later, so if you do get this colour onto the hull, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I then figured it would be a good idea to paint the tyres on the road wheels. For this I used Ammo by MIG rubber and tyres. I think this is an okay colour, though maybe it would have turned out a bit better if I'd applied a darker grey underneath it. Oh well, hindsight is 2020, and I don't think it's really worth going back and doing it again at this point. I'm going pretty carefully with this, again because it's less work to just be careful than it is to go back and do touch ups. Though don't be afraid to go back and do touch ups. It's not hard to do, though it is a little bit fiddly to get this in between the guide horns on the inner road wheels. Next, I take model colour beige brown and paint the jacking block, if this is in fact a jacking block. I think it is. It's not too hard to do this neatly, it's all just flat straight edges. I use the same colour for the tool handles, like the shovel. I do my best to get the colour not only along the tops of the handles but down the sides as well, which is a bit fiddly on parts this small but it can be done. You may notice that I missed the axe at the very rear of the engine deck, but I did get it later. It's moderately annoying to forget things, but it's not the worst thing that can happen. It makes sense to then paint the heads of the tools. I used Vallejo model colour gunmetal for this, and as with previous colours I'm being careful to only put this where I want it. I also use this colour for the fire extinguisher, though I'm not really sure it should be this colour or match the hull, but I don't care. I think it adds a bit of interest. 
Metallics are a little bit more annoying to clean up or paint over, but it can obviously still be done. Though if you don't have to, you'll save some time. You can see that I still haven't painted the axe handle, but the tool is there, so the head gets painted with gunmetal as well. Why not also paint the tools on the rear plate, like the bolt cutters and what I'm assuming is a starting crank. And these C-shaped track tool things as well, whatever they're called. These can be painted with the same colour as well, because why not? And then the machine gun. This doesn't quite look right at the moment, but we can always darken it down later. You might think that it's time to use a different colour, but you would be wrong. I painted the jack on the rear plate gunmetal as well. Probably could have done this while I was painting the other things on the rear, but you know, whatever. This was a bit tricky to get into the sides, so it might be a bit rough in there, but it's also kind of hard to see, so I guess it could be worse. I highlighted the tool handles next, and I've used Vallejo model colour cork brown for this. I just apply a light thin strip along the upper edges of the handle. It's simple enough, we're not trying to paint wood grain or anything here. Also at some point I painted the axe handle at the rear. The gunmetal colour isn't really super bright or shiny or anything like that, especially when you look at how shiny the base coat is in comparison, but I still want to darken it down a bit. For this I used undiluted army painter dark tone. It's okay to get this around the base of the extinguisher or tool heads or whatever, that should add a little bit of a shadow to them, but I am trying to be fairly careful with this and only put it where I want it, which is on all of the parts I painted with gunmetal. I applied it around the opening of the exhausts as well, because why not? That area should be a little bit darker with soot. I also hit the machine gun with this, because gun barrels aren't generally very silvery. Then I take army paint a soft tone, also undiluted, and I apply it to the wooden handles and jacking block. The idea here is just to add a bit more interest and colour variation. I think it worked fairly well. I've obviously not added a lot of extra colour to this model, but I think it's enough and I was satisfied at this point, so I added a coat of Minotaur Satin Varnish because it's now time for enamels. On the tracks I apply MIG Productions Track Wash, which I know is a wild and crazy place to use track wash. Ha ha ha! Hilarious. This is the second time I've used this particular track wash and base coat. Last time I applied dark tone before the track wash, which I felt made it a bit too dark. This time I haven't and I think it looks a bit better this way. Still it's a bit dark in the end, but I think it looks good. Unlike the base coat I'm just using the same brush for the large and small sections here. This stuff is a lot easier to remove if you get it somewhere that you don't want it, so I'm not especially worried about that. I did get a little bit on the rubber of the rear road wheel here, and it's removed very easily with a clean or cleanish brush with thinner. I also applied this to the spare track links which makes sense, they are tracks as well. But here I've dipped the brush in thinner before applying it, so it's a little bit thinner. Not much, but it's enough to make them a bit different. It's a little bit less solid a colour, and a tiny bit more of the base coat should show through. On the exhausts, I apply MIG Productions standard rust effects. This is a pretty solid coat and it's fairly close to the base colour, but that's okay. Before it was dry, I applied MIG Light Rust Effects. I just sort of dab this on in various places on the exhausts. Then I gently blend it with the standard rust effects below. You can fiddle with this kind of thing until it looks right to you, and you can blend it with or without thinner on the brush. Once I think it looks okay, that is to say not super rusty, just a bit, I move on and just to see what it was like, I apply MIG Tan 4 Tritonal Camo Filter to the wooden tool handles and jacking block. I'd never used this before and this is obviously not Tritonal Camo, but why not? It made the wooden handles a bit darker and I was satisfied with the look. Next I thought I might as well try and add some depth. So I took MIG Wash 4 Desert Sand Base, and I know this isn't really a desert sand base, but it's a darker colour that I thought might be okay for this. Only squares use their paints for strictly what they say on the bottle. I just apply this to all the gaps and around raised parts, and then I remove the excess. It's pretty simple and it's turned out fairly subtle, which I think is good. I don't want this thing to be too dirty, and I certainly don't want the colour shift paint to be obscured too much but I do feel like it's a good idea to add a bit of dirtiness around the gaps and such. It makes it look a bit more realistic, even though this is obviously not at all intended to be a totally realistic paint job. Just to give it a little something else, a bit more dirt, I use MIG Subtle Dirt Filter. 
the idea being to add some dirt that is subtle. Sometimes you do want to use the paint for what it says on the bottle. I apply and remove this mostly around the lower areas of the vehicle, the tracks and wheels, just so that it looks like it's being driven around a little bit. There are a couple of spots where it's lifted the colour on the tracks, mostly on the treads, and also the left road wheels. Maybe I didn't hit that area with protective varnish enough, or maybe painting over the lacquer isn't the strongest. It has worked well for the most part though. I gave those areas a bit of a touch up with the track wash and rubber tyre colour respectively, and I think that's just about enough. I didn't want to go overboard with the weathering, so I apply some more satin varnish. I was unsure if matte varnish would ruin the colour shift effect, so I tried it out on some areas that were less likely to be visible. It made the paint look kind of bad, so what I did was carefully spray the matte varnish onto the tracks and exhausts, but leave the rest of the vehicle in satin varnish. So that's the ultra sensible and realistic colour shift Jagd Panther completed. Okay, obviously it's not realistic, and even having said that somebody's still going to tell me, and even having said that somebody's going to tell me as a joke. Anyway, this model was really just to see how the SMS colour shift paint would work. I guess in fairness I could just test it out on a bit of flat plastic, but where's the fun in that? It can be fun to invent stories for this kind of thing, so maybe this is some kind of secret night camo paint or something. It's kind of far-fetched and matte black would probably work better, but at the moment it's the best story I've got for this. Either way, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. It's one more for my collection of strangely painted tanks, and that collection is not going to stop growing anytime soon, which I'm sure upsets some people, but that's okay. I'm not doing it for you, I'm doing it for my own enjoyment, but if you like it too, that's cool. I think the colour shift paint itself is really quite nice. I rather like the blue and cyan colours in particular. It makes me think of space, and space is cool. I've never used this kind of lacquer before, and it wasn't difficult to work with or clean up. It just smells kind of bad. The only problem really is that it's kind of dark and doesn't have any highlights. I guess the way to do that would have been to add some white over the black base coat. Maybe I should try that on something else. Who knows. Either way, the paint is nice. I haven't tried any other colour shifting paints that you can get, but maybe one day I'll try them out and do some sort of comparison. The tracks and tools and stuff I did on this model were pretty basic, and the model is almost entirely one, or really three colours, but I feel like the other bits do help to break stuff up and make it look a bit more interesting. Though I could certainly add more bits and pieces and make minor changes, but I think for now it's done. It is fair to say that this model is kind of just a test, but I figured why not do a complete paint job, or close to a complete paint job anyway. It shows how the colour shift paint can work with other colours as well, and that's probably a good thing to test. Anyway, I don't really have much else to say, other than I rather enjoyed doing this. I do have another one of these Jagd Panthers, but I don't think I'll paint it the same way. I've already done it. But maybe I can come up with another unusual paint job for it. If anybody's got any interesting suggestions, feel free to share them in the comment section below. Speaking of comment sections, if you have any questions or comments, they can go in said comment section. If you are interested in the particular colours I've used in this video, a list will be in the description below. If you haven't already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. And if you're feeling really helpful, share this video around with your friends or family or anybody you think might get something out of it. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thank you for watching. Farewell.